Welcome to the Delight Your Marriage Podcast, the show where you hear from amazing and inspiring wives sharing their struggles, triumphs, and advice for this journey called marriage. Here's your host, Bella Rose. Hi there and welcome, welcome. I am so glad that you are joining me today. I am Bella Rose and I did want to uh, let you know that I am going to talk a little bit about, um, before we dive into the show, which I think is an awesome, awesome show for you, uh, really giving practical insight and advice for people that have attraction or even a crush on someone that is not their spouse. I really want to dive into that because I think it happens all the time and we don't know how to deal with it. So I want to give um, very key descriptive as well as prescriptive kinds of advice here. But before I do, um, I do get emails quite a lot from listeners, and I'm so grateful for that. If you ever want to email me, feel free. It's Bella at DelightYourMarriage.com. That's B-E-L-A-H at DelightYourMarriage.com. But nine out of ten of those emails that I get are from husbands. And as you know, this is a show for wives, So why do I get all these emails from husbands? Well, what I constantly hear is that uh, they feel that I, one, understand them, where they're coming from, um, I respect them, and um, I also accept them for their desire and drive for sexual intimacy with their wife. And so often, I mean, I, it's the constant refrain is, I wish I could get my wife to listen to your resources. I wish she would be interested in your, your book and courses. And, um, and, and I'm at a loss because on the one hand, sure, you know, maybe their wife is, is just completely terrible and it's all her fault that she doesn't want to be open to um, this kind of material and, you know, learning and that kind of thing. Or there's history or there's baggage, whether it's her hurt in the past, previous to her husband's, you know, relationship with her, or it's just the husband um, maybe not knowing how to... um, yeah, give his wife what she needs, either sexually or just in intimacy and relationships. Um, and they've had some baggage and back and forth. And, and that's really what it is. And so when I coach women, and I love to coach women, so that's also an option for you if that's something you're interested in as a wife. But I'm trying to figure out how can I expand the breadth of my um, influence towards men? Because clearly this is this is a need. And, um, you know, I toyed around with, you know, should I, should I not, uh, coach men one-on-one and, um, and yeah, I've come to a spot of peace where the answer is not one-on-one. I don't want to get involved in, in that kind of too, too, um, intimate of a setting almost. Um, but what I would like to do is do virtual classroom settings. Um, so where a variety of men, multiple men are on a call with me and we can discuss, you know, what I I can give a teaching, um, maybe more explicit about, uh, the way women think, some of the answers to questions I've received over the years. And, um, men can ask me specific questions and I can read those out and I can talk about those or, um, we make somehow kind of a discussion based. So, um, and and then I would record all of those and, uh, every discussion, every, um, conversation would be available henceforward for any man that subscribed to this, um, opportunity. So what I'm calling it is delight your wife how to find out to make her tick. And so, um, or find out how she ticks or whatever you want to say. So anyway, this is brand new. I'm really excited about it. Um, what I am offering coming November is if you go ahead and sign up now, 
I will give you the lowest subscription fee that I will ever give because um, the content is being developed while we do our recorded live calls. So um, yeah, I just invite you, you know, this is the closest I can get to one-on-one coaching. And there's so many men that desire this kind of um, insight to, to know how to reach out to their wife, to know how to um, change the situation. Because the sad thing I hate is seeing men and hearing from them and this hopeless situation. They just feel hopeless. And the thing is, there is no situation that is hopeless. Unless you're dead, you can have hope for your marriage turning around. And I'm in the business of changing people and changing marriages and, um, really being a conduit. So God does that. Um, but he does use that. He does use this, um, uh, delight your marriage to change people. It's incredible, incredible what he's doing. So, um, yeah, check that out. Delight your wife. You can go to, uh, delightyourmarriage.com, click on resources and, uh, go ahead and get enrolled in that, um, yeah, in November, 2018 in the future, if you're listening, feel free to sign up. There's going to be a lot of really great, um, recordings in there and different uh, material that I'll be posting consistently in there. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for, um, for that. I, I think that it's going to be a really great resource for, um, the gentlemen that listen and reach out to me. Let's dive into today's episode. Hello, hello. You have uh, just tuned in to the Delight Your Marriage podcast where I speak to women about their marriage and sex life and how those things work together and their heart and uh, our walk with God and um, how that beautiful uh, metaphor of marriage uh, gives us a picture of what our lives with Jesus should and can look like on this earth and then throughout eternity. So let's go ahead and dive in. I wanted to talk about something that I think is really important about what to do when you are attracted to someone other than your husband. Now, again, I speak to women, but certainly men do tune in and uh, leave reviews on the uh, iTunes. And uh, I welcome you to go ahead and leave reviews on the iTunes as well, as uh, the more reviews you have, the easier it is uh, for people to find the show and then uh, to be blessed by it and for it to uh, impact more people. So uh, if you do have a moment to do that, that would be really greatly appreciated If you're not sure how to do that, you can go to delightyourmarriage.com slash iTunes, and you can uh, see the directions there. But otherwise, I wanted to, yeah, talk about um, this topic. But like I said, husbands do tune in. And so even though this is all about for wives, it's going to give a lot of I think insights and directives for husbands as well. So I'm glad if you are a husband, feel free to stay tuned as, um, as I think there'll be some insights for you here, uh, as well that you can apply. All right. So what happens when you feel attracted to someone else other than your husband? I mean, you were originally attracted to him. That's why you all got married. That was the dating phase. You were probably wildly excited about him, very erotically uh, inspired. And then marriage happened. And more than likely, there were at least months, probably a a couple of years, hopefully a few years where there was uh, what they call a honeymoon stage. And maybe things changed, maybe bodies changed, maybe children came along, maybe just busyness happened and lives potentially have gotten a little bit less exciting as they were in those early stages of falling in love. And that's really normal. And I wanted to kind of describe it because you probably know exactly what I'm talking about, but it's normal. I want to also say that it doesn't have to be the case 
where you can have a passionate, fun, exciting, loving, uh, surprising marriage throughout your life. It doesn't have to end after a certain, you know, the seven year itch or whatever that people call it. So, so right. That's normal that, that, that situation, but it's also doesn't have to be the case. So when you are attracted to someone, let's say that, um, this is a acquaintance that, you know, at work and you see them every so often and it just kind of, you're just kind of excited that you get to talk to them and uh, somehow they seem interesting and, and maybe their physique is attractive to you and you find your mind kind of going in that direction every so often. So I think the first thing to do when you find yourself attracted to someone else, and especially if you're listening to this and, and that's you in this moment, um, is to determine where you are on a spectrum of maybe your level of attraction or kind of where you are in uh, maybe the temptation zone of attraction. So on a scale of one to 10, I want to kind of give some keys on uh, potentially where you are and where I think it's important for you to get awareness as to where you are to kind of determine in what sort of hot water are you in? Are you just in kind of the earliest stage and it's really easy to nip it in the bud at the very beginning? Or is it a very late stage and there needs to be really significant action taken on your part to make sure that uh, the most important things in life and throughout eternity are protected as a result of the actions you take now? So, right. So I want to just think about with you, uh, some of the spectrum levels. So I would say level one to three, let's say that's maybe that office friend that when you see them or you talk to them, you feel a chemistry, you feel a little excited that they're spending time with you. Maybe you have similar interests, maybe some of the, um, you know, things that you just find quote, your type you find in that person. And I would say that's probably a one to three. And I would give some proactive steps for you to take. I would say that the first step is to talk openly to God about it and just tell him like, Lord, you know, I, I saw this person. I, I have to see this person or I saw this person and I, I feel kind of this way about it. I feel attracted to him and, um, Lord, I just ask you to help me to redirect my thoughts and purify my thoughts and help me to direct all my, uh, attraction to my husband and, uh, to stay faithful to him in my heart and in my, um, and in my, my daily thoughts, God. Um, one thing to notice here. As I mentioned in the very beginning of this podcast, that marriage is a metaphor for our walk with Jesus. And when you think about your husband and all the other options there is in this world to be in love with or to be attracted to, I mean, there's uh, 7 billion people on this planet and you chose one to stay committed to forever. Um, that is a big deal. And it's similar to our walk with Jesus that we have a lot of options in this world to chase after and pursue, but we chose Jesus and that's a pursuit and that's a disciplined effort. And it's not something that, um, is just going to naturally happen. It's a daily um, it's a, it's a daily effort. And so I want to keep that in mind as we're talking about this, that this is a, um, this is a character thing. This isn't just a, uh, help me not get divorced God kind of thing. This is a, uh, what, 
in what way am I able to uh, learn about my walk with Jesus through my marriage? So maybe the level of attraction is being directed at someone else. Um, but how do I rein that back, put it on the right track, uh, just like I do with my uh, pursuit and desire for Jesus? So again, that's kind of just a little tangent to think about this as a character thing. It's not just a, uh, it's not just a, you know, I don't want to hurt my kids. It's, it's a bigger thing than that. It's something that shows how do you pursue what, uh, you're committed to, um, just like you've committed your life to Jesus. So yeah, so talk to God about it. Be really open and honest and um, ask him to help you through this. Uh, the other thing is get busy. Um, I'm trying to remember, I don't have access to internet right now, but I believe it is in the Proverbs that says something along the lines of uh, idle hands are the devil's playground or something like that. Um, and essentially, you know, when we're idle or we just don't have enough going on, um, then we are more tempted. So I would say, you know, find something that uh, gets you excited. It's something, maybe a new hobby, maybe something that you would never think that you could be interested in or you never felt that you had enough time to do. Well, here's your time because clearly you have enough mental space to be devoting it to uh, thinking about someone else. So why not try to pursue a, a new activity? or new um, ambition. I mean, there's so many cool things in nature. Maybe start being excited about saving monarch butterflies because 96% uh, of them have been eliminated since we've been using pesticides on our lawns, for example. Or you could get involved in so many different activities, so many different um, activists uh, are happening around, um, you know, you could start pursuing something. And, and that is what an attraction is, is, is it's, it's a pursuit. So if you start pursuing something else, why then that takes away the pursuit um, for that person you feel attracted to. The other thing is become an enthusiastic lover of your husband. So um, whatever inspiration you're getting through this uh, person that you've been you know, just finding yourself kind of start thinking about, uh, just redirect that inspiration towards your man in the bedroom and everywhere else. So, you know, maybe it makes you feel flirtatious to be thinking about this person. Why then start being flirtatious with your husband? Just start being that woman that you would be with this other person because what you would be with this other person is in that dating phase. So be in that dating phase with your man. Just, just think about that. How can you be in a dating phase with your husband um, as though you were in a dating phase with anyone at all? The other thing is redirect your thoughts. You know, this is probably a given, but uh, be intentional about it. Don't let your thoughts rest on this other person, their qualities, the, the ways that uh, they make you feel or whatever, just, just redirect it. Um, our brains are, they call it the plasticity of our uh, neurons or, or neural connectivity. And essentially what it means is that we can, brain, we can change our brain connections uh, to different patterns. Um, essentially, the, the scientists have studied the brain and describe it as kind of like a highway. And so the deeper certain brain um, pathways have been forged, essentially, it's like you're creating a highway every time your mind goes a certain way, uh, let's say it's to this person, um, that highway gets deeper and bigger and wider and more neural uh, more neurons travel through that larger connection. But as you start to make a new road, let's say it starts out as a dirt road. 
And then suddenly it's paved and then more thoughts towards that way, more thoughts towards that way. And it gets bigger and bigger and deeper and wider and higher. And then that other highway starts to diminish and gets smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually goes away. And so that's the way that the scientists have found that the brain works is that it actually can change. So you don't have to feel like you are beholden to the way your brain works right now, the way your mind works. Redirecting your thoughts is actually um, something you have control over and something you can affect uh, day by day. So I encourage you to do that uh, actively. So when he comes to mind, find something else that you're going to be thinking about. So let's say there's a certain area of his physique, broad shoulders, for example, that really gets you going, then that gives you a quick trigger to consider your husband's, your favorite uh, part of your husband's physique. Let's say, you know, his chest is really a sexy part of um, what you've always been attracted to with him. And that's just a quick switch or maybe your husband's shoulders and, and a memory of when that really turned you on, whether it was early on in your relationship or, um, even just the other day, but, uh, keep that in mind and, and keep, uh, remembering how your husband has turned you on. Um, okay. The next thing I wanted to mention is read the word. Um, that is something that purifies our thoughts. It puts us in the way that God wants us to be thinking. Um, so, so do that. Don't, don't forget the word of God that is going to help you, um, with this. The other one is start working with your hands. Uh, I did mention find a new pursuit, but working with your hands gets you out of your head and into something physical. So maybe gardening is a, is something you can start taking up, maybe rock climbing. Um, I definitely encourage you to do something physical. So it gets you out of your head and into your body uh, so that you're not having to just deal with thoughts all day long. Instead, you're focusing on something that's more uh, uh, less mind centered. Um, okay. So that was kind of one to three, um, early, early stages, um, that you want to just nip in the bud. All right. So four to seven, let's say, uh, you know, if you find yourself on that scale, that's probably, you find your mind wandering to this person consistently. Um, you find yourself wanting to spend time with them. Maybe you, uh, go to certain situations or, or your social gatherings, hoping they're going to be there. Um, just, just kind of a, a greater degree of, um, moving in that direction towards them. Um, I would say now you need to not be doing this by yourself. Um, do all the things I've already talked about, especially praying, talking to God, honestly about it. Um, but now involve a sister, involve a wise friend who you can trust and be honest with her and, and tell her what you're feeling, what you're doing, how, how you're, you know, even feeling sad about this and feeling like this is not something you should be doing, but you're not sure how to go about changing it. Um, but, but talk to her about it, get her advice, get her just camaraderie, someone that can help you be accountable to not be going in the direction of where he is. Um, and so, yeah, uh, the next, the next advice is to avoid spending time with this person. Just even if there are occasions that you really want to go to, but because you're in this space, you're in the level of attraction from four to seven, it's not good for you. It's not good for your life, for your marriage. It's not good to be there. So find something else that's going to bring you joy and it's going to be better for you and have your, your friend hold you accountable to that. Now I would say intentionally journal at this point, at this point, journal about the qualities that specifically inspire you about this other person and affirm that your husband's qualities are better because of X, Y, or Z. So maybe this person is gentle 
and you, you know, have just found yourself attracted to that about this person. So then spend some time journaling, you know, God, I am attracted to, to gentleness and I have seen my husband be gentle in this way, in this way, and in this way. And I know he's a gentle man. And I know, God, that you're going to continue to teach him to be gentle and continue to show me his gentleness because I'm attracted to that and I'm attracted to those qualities in my husband. Another thing uh, is to begin doing affirmations in faith. Um, write down affirmations about your husband's great qualities and say those, especially when these thoughts come about this person and how you like them. You can start talking about it out loud, you know, wherever you are, uh, just say something out loud to break the, um, again, that pattern in your mind, say something aloud to, to redirect the thought. I find that uh, when I'm trying to redirect my thoughts from something that I don't want to be thinking about, when I say something aloud, it actually makes my, um, it makes my, uh, it, it just breaks, it breaks the pattern and makes my mind go in the direction of the affirmation instead. So for example, if you're thinking about, wow, this person is such a great father, um, you know, I wish my husband would do, you know, whatever on the weekends with my kids. And then you, in your head, that maybe that's what you're thinking. And then you break that by saying, my husband is a fantastic father. Even just last week, he made sure that he came home on time so that he could spend time with our son. That, that would be a great affirmation uh, to just remember and notice what wonderful things are about your husband and the things that you are attracted to about him. And then, of course, just as a make sure, you know, as you're doing all of these things, draw close to your husband. Spend more time with him. Spend uh, the effort to make sure that you're bolstering your relationship rather than, um, rather than uh, just fighting against the temptation rather than um, actually intentionally cultivating attraction and romance with your husband. Um, you can be super intentional about that. I've got quite a lot of um, episodes that you can draw uh, empowerment from, but I encourage you to do that. Um, okay, so now I want to... Um, go to, you know, the levels, maybe eight to 10. Now this is very, uh, extreme levels of attraction. You know, maybe you're considering an affair or divorce, or maybe you're already in that spot. Maybe you're already in, um, an affair or, um, you are in a separation and there's, you know, very close to that situation. Um, I would consider now seeking counsel of a therapist, uh, a pastor, a woman, a mentor, uh, someone who's going to be wise and uh, character-driven, honest with you. Um, I would use every bit of sexual inspiration that you have drawn from this person and direct it towards your spouse. Okay, so... This is Bella. I uh, wanted to break in here and just let you know. Um, unfortunately, uh, the rest of the episode, there's a lot of background noise. I recorded this in a remote village. Anyway, bear with me and uh, you can still hear my voice. Just see if you can focus in and ignore the uh, different sounds in the background. Okay. So whatever thing you have imagined doing with that person, I would do it to your spouse. I would, um, you know, whatever, whatever ways that you have found yourself, um, wanting and in being inspired to do, I would just, um, take that and take it as just literally inspiration and just, you know, 
for some reason that's what you have found yourself thinking of doing, then do that with your own man. And do it a lot. And just get your body into the lovemaking experience with your spouse. And be very enthusiastic. If you have... Uh, taken my course, the seduction course, or the delight your husband course, you know that I'm a huge, uh, a huge fan, or I think it's hugely important to be enthusiastic in the bedroom. Uh, even in faith, whether or not you feel enthusiastic or not, uh, the more enthusiastic you act, the more you will feel enthusiastic. So you actually have to apply faith in that enthusiasm and it will grow. So have faith that it is going to grow and be enthusiastic in the bedroom of your marriage, regardless if you have had an affair, if it's currently going on, change the behavior to direct it to your spouse enthusiastically. Um, pray fervently, really. This is a big deal. It's a big, big deal to, to the kingdom of God. The enemy does not want families to survive. The enemy does not want a marriage to thrive. The enemy does not want you or your husband to be full and free and whole and um, fervent in their walk with God or uh, have fidelity in their marriage. The enemy wants to destroy all of that. And you're on the, the cusp of, of what he is trying to destroy. So pray and realize the, the, um, the, uh, the true, um, truly what is at risk. And with, with that in mind, write down, really literally take out a sheet of paper and write down the pros and cons of a decision of this magnitude, magnitude, literally write a column of pro and write a column of con. And let's say the pros, maybe there's a lot. Maybe the pros would be, you know, finally I can be with someone I'm sexually attracted to. Maybe another pro would be I'm, um, you know, going to uh, live out my days with um, a man who um, loves to take me on dates. You know, who knows what, what the pros would be. But just be expansive on whatever pro you think should be on there and, and be honest with yourself. What is the pro? What is the thing you are, are willing to sacrifice um, for? Like, why are you doing this? What is the reason? Really be honest with yourself because whatever decision you end up making, you want to know that you knew what you were doing. You don't want to look back and regret and say, I just didn't know. I was just ignorant of the potential or I, you know, or it was all worth it because I knew exactly what I was doing. Either way, I want you to have that list um, because then you have something to look back on and say, this was the decision. I knew full well what I was doing and it was the right thing to do. So that pro, uh, that pro column and then the con column. And I want you to list out every single reason that this should not be what you should do. And I want you to include every single person on there and how it would affect them. Whether it's your kids, whether it's your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your church friends, your uh, non-church friends, your uh, people that uh, love you in different areas of your life. Um, and, and you know, I'm not in your situation and I am aware, I was reading this yesterday, you know, beware of bold simplicity. And I think sometimes I, I am boldly simple on this podcast because I assume things about your life that I have no idea, but there's obviously no way for me to know the details of your life. Um, and that's why I do have a podcast because I hope to reach more people um, so sometimes I am boldly simple, um, but you know, your life, you know, your situation much, much better than I do. Um, but also I encourage you to just discern, um, what is going to be the effect of this decision. Now I am someone who got a divorce. That was my first marriage. Um, this marriage is 
incredibly different uh, for many, many, many reasons. Uh, a huge thing is that I am incredibly different. Um, so I don't, I don't come at you with a judging, a judging or um, shaming spirit, but I do want to come at you with a um, proactive and responsible spirit because you'll need to be responsible for this action, whatever the choice is whether it's fighting against this temptation and fighting for your marriage or choosing that it's just not the, um, not the marriage that you had planned it to be. And, and that this other person is the, is the better, uh, better choice in this, in this realm. But I want you to be aware of what you are really doing and what's at stake and what's being sacrificed. Um, because, Divorces break hearts, uh, not just the two people that are involved, truly. It's children, it's family members, it's neighbors, it's communities, it's churches. It's, it's sad. It's very, very sad. And, um, you know, I talk a lot about how, you know, even in the midst of marriages that have been on the most, the worst places, the most difficult times with affairs, with, with addictions, all of these things, um, you know, God's grace is more powerful than anything. Uh, and Jesus can turn everything around and you'll hear on my podcast, you can hear episodes of women that have been in the worst situations and God has done, have done things. You know, my parents, I've witnessed, uh, horrible situations and, and God has still done things. And, um, I just encourage you, um, to determine what, what really is going on, what really is at stake here. Um, and consider also what is the short term and what is the long term effects of this, uh, as you do the pros and cons really think about what's short term, what's going to be the next few months, what's going to be the next five years, what's going to be the next 10 years, the next 30 years, the next 50 years. Because, you know, when you consider uh, something like an affair, uh, maybe your kids are young and um, you're going to have to be with the, the, the father of your children for the rest of their lives. Uh, regardless of if you get divorced or not, you will have to be involved with each other. You will have to see each other on a consistent basis. You will have to be involved in weddings together, graduations together. You will have to see that person a lot. So if the choice of having an affair or divorcing for another person um, is because you don't want to be in your current husband's life anymore, the choice has already been made. You don't, you, you will always be in that person's life. It's not, it's, it's not something you can choose anymore. That will happen. There will always be bad memories around, um, that person and you can never escape them because, um, your children are involved. Your children will live, uh, outlive you, God willing. And you will always hear about memories that maybe used to have mom and dad, but now they only have mom or now they only have dad. And there will be uh, lots of really difficult situations between step parents and step dads and, um, uh, just really difficult things. So, so consider that the long-term effects, because it's not just the next couple of months are going to be happy and go lucky. And consider also that once again, you are, it's normal to have a honeymoon phase and it's normal to fall out of that honeymoon phase. And so with this new person, that's exactly what it's going to be like. The other thing I want to mention is that every bit of attraction you have for this other person is fantasy. It is a fantasy. It takes a while, but eventually the flaws will be very apparent because we are all human and we all have flaws. I have, I tell my husband all the time that he is the most amazing man I have ever met because that's how I see him. I choose to see him that way. I choose to see him as an instrument of God's love and grace to me and our family and to the people he meets. But if I chose to look at him as a flawed, uh, 
human who does all these bad things. And if I chose that to focus on, I could find plenty. I could find absolutely plenty. But I don't, I don't focus on that. I don't look at for that. What I look for is the ways that he is bolstering my relationship with Jesus, the way he is loving me and the way he is loving our kids and the way he is serving uh, the community and the kingdom of God. And so those are the choices I make intentionally in my heart and in my thoughts and the way that he turns me on. That's what I think about. That's what I care about. So that eventually those become my reality. That is what, that's the pathway that gets so strong in my thought patterns. That's the highway my, my, my thoughts go down so often that I can confidently say he's the most amazing man I've ever met. And he's my husband. I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. I encourage you. That is the potential you can have with your spouse. So I hope this has been encouraging. I hope that my bold words have been helpful. Um, and I hope that you will uh, take proactive steps because the enemy does want to destroy your marriage. And it's not, a, it's not a small thing. It is lives in the balance. It is souls in the balance. I remember uh, two specific marriages and families that I had the privilege of being around when I was a kid. And they were the only two families that I really saw great marriages in. And I saw them, I mean, they were passionate, they were funny, they were playful. And I just felt safe in those homes. I felt safe. I felt like this is a family that, that loves me, that has so much overflowing love. And, um, and they, and they, they were, there was so much balance in their life. They, they had, um, they had, uh, affection to, to share. It wasn't there. There's not a finite amount of affection. Um, when you have a strong marriage, I feel like God just fills, fills a home with that. And, um, I mean, I can remember having a, a surprise birthday party at one of their homes and, um, and the father was involved, the mom and the dad, no absent father at all. I mean, it was surprising how, um, how great a marriage can be for, for children. And, um, I, I just remember that as being incredibly, uh, powerful in my life. Um, so yeah, we just don't know what God's doing through good, good marriages and, and how that affects, um, who those people will be years and years and years and years later, just because you're faithful and you did the hard work. Um, so I encourage you, I bless you, and I pray that God would give you the grace uh, to make wise decisions now, um, wherever you are and whatever your situation. God bless you, and I look forward to talking with you um, in two weeks. Bye. <music> Right. Well, let me go ahead and pray for you. Father, we lift you up, God. We say you are good and you are holy and you are worthy, Father. Oh, God, we just we just lay our life before you, God, and you see all the details. You know every dark place in our heart. You know every good place in our heart. You're proud of all the good that we seek and our intentions that are for you, God, and not against you, God. And I just ask, God, that every person listening, God, every detail, every moment that their uh, thought life needs to be uh, put back on course, God, and that their heart needs to be realigned. Father, I just ask that you would do what only you can do, God. I pray, God, that you would give them the grace to be in a community of people that are going to uphold them and encourage them and help them to be faithful, to be uh, strong in their commitment to their husband, God. And I pray that um, you would just bind these marriages together, Father God, that every nugget of truth that you may have allowed in this podcast, God, would stay with uh, the person that's listening to my voice right now, God, that uh, she or he would be able to just roll it around in their thoughts and in their heart, God, and that it would affect them. It would change them, God. Um, 
you know, and anything that they didn't need to hear and that wasn't uh, applicable or, or didn't have anything to do with them or wasn't the right thing for them at this time, God, I pray that you would just shed it off of them. They wouldn't remember it. Um, Holy Spirit, you are God and you will, uh, direct us into all truth. And I pray that you would God, um, in Jesus name. Amen. Thanks so much for listening. I uh, look forward to speaking to you soon. God bless. Love you. Bye. Thanks for listening. If you've been blessed by this, why not share it? Until next time, live with love, wisdom, and passion.